All right, Hurricane Ike is joining us. It landed in Abu Dhabi and it is back in the United States. Huge win this past Wednesday. Knocks out Venetius Marrera in the second round. Main card spot. First UFC win. Life is good in Texas for Ike Villanueva. How are you, sir? Oh, man, I'm doing good, man. Uh, great to be back home, especially after that big win. So it's been around five days as we record from the big finish. And, you know, first Octagon win in three tries. It happens in Abu Dhabi. What does it all feel like less than a week later? Oh, man, it's still uh, still unbelievable, man, because, you know, that's 13 years of hard work that I put into that night. And, uh, man, I'm still soaking it all in. I mean, everybody still called me, congrat- congratulating me. Which is, man, I'm just very thankful I had the opportunity to perform out there, and it was a, it was a wonderful time. So – Quick story. I'm, I'm watching the fight on Wednesday and you're getting introduced. And I noticed immediately that you are in incredible shape, man. Like I actually sent the great Ed Cap a message on Facebook and I was like, dude, I got to get on that Ike Villanueva diet. The dude looks un- uh, unbelievable. Like you looked like this peak athletic Ike. Like you, j- you looked like a different guy, man. Like, is that accurate? Did you feel different? Was, did you do something different? Um, yeah, I just, man, I trusted the diet, man. Uh, thank, th- thankfully, uh, trifecta. Eat eat evolve. They took care of me this whole training camp, and I was just real disciplined this camp, and it it showed and it paid off, man. It was just, that's something as a fighter, you know, we we tend to you know cheat a little bit on those little diets, but I stuck to it this time, and man, it really showed this camp. Is that like the best you probably like looked and felt physically heading into a fight? You think? Oh yeah, you know, yes sir, no doubt. I guess, thankfully, you know, going forward, I, my my job, my my goal is to keep on, you know continue with the diet and keep on trying to get better. But yeah, that was the best I ever looked. I was excited. What was the weight cut like for you? Like how much did you have to cut to get to 205? Oh, uh, i tell you what, this, this is probably the easiest cut I had. I, I said, in the, uh, <laughs> we actually made a video on my Instagram of, you know, just making fun of the weight cut. It was so easy. It took 30 minutes, like two 15 minute sessions, just cutting down in the hot tub. That was it. It was like, man, Abu Dhabi, thankfully trifecta just took care of us with the meals. And so I just stuck to that eating that. I was eating four times a day, the trifecta meals, and then Abu Dhabi, which was amazing because I was full, but I was still still cutting the weight. It was amazing. There you go. You're like a spokesperson for trifecta right now. It show it really works, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes, sir. So in this pandemic era, since the UFC has come back, you have fought in Jacksonville, you fought in Las Vegas at the Apex, and now you fought in Abu Dhabi. Pretty short list of fighters who have done all three of those things in this short amount of time, but a lot was riding on this one. What what was the whole experience like for you in Abu Dhabi, especially with so much at stake in this fight? Um, man, just the experience. I mean, the W Hotel, five star for a reason, man. That was an amazing hotel. Too bad we were in like it was a like a prison. We were in quarantine the whole time, <laughs> but it was still, man. The whole staff was amazing. The UFC staff was amazing. But like I said, man, this fight it was another game seven. My back was against the wall again, and. You know, like I said, if it's a game seven, I, you know, when my back's against the wall, I perform the best. And I showed that throughout my career. It was do or die, and I wasn't ready to go home. I'm not done. I'm not done. I still got a lot of fights left in me. And now we can get the ball rolling. So I'm excited moving forward. So you're across the globe getting ready for the most important fight of your career. You're at the hotel in, in prison, so to speak. You can't really go anywhere. And then a little less than a week before the fight, USADA comes out and announces that your opponent had tested positive for a banned substance, but luckily he only received a warning and the fight would still go on a schedule. Did you know about this at all? Like, how did you react to this? I was pissed. I mean, <laughs> I was pissed. And, uh, it was funny because I sat in the USC uh, interview room with the, the ESPN broadcast team and I let them know how I felt. Ah, man. they like, man, tell me about your opponent. What do you think about him? And I said, I said, F bleep bleep. Than my damn opponent, man, because it really, man, it bothered me so much because every one of my fights so far in the UFC, you saw has got involved. Chase Sherman tested positive. George Gonzalez tested positive. And this one, I was like, oh my God, really? Can we have a you know fair playing field? Because you know, you saw them, man, they test me man, all the time. They'll test me on Sunday nights when I'm relaxing with my family. And to see guys like that get tested and test positive, and all you saw to do was just hey, a little pat on the hand, a little, little, a little, I'm, a, uh, I'm not gonna punish you, but I'm just gonna give you a warning. That was total BS, man. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still upset about it, but I'm glad because whatever steroids you take, like I said in my, my Twitter, it didn't make his jaw stronger. I mean, it showed. Was there a little more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Was there a little more uh, pleasure in that knockout, all oh, things considered? Okay. That, that's where all the vocalness, all, all the loudest was coming out after the fight. I was just like letting everybody know, you know, about that. You no, know, doubters, namesayers, I just took it out of him and just for him taking all those, whatever he took. Yeah, that was for that. <laughs> So the walk to the octagon, like as I mean, there's just so much has to be going on in your mind right now. What was that like for you? Like, did did you have to work to kind of control the mental aspect and, and keep yourself calm throughout all of this? Nah, man. When my music started playing, uh, it was my time. I knew my my coaches were like, man, it's you know, let's do or die. We're, we're doing this for Gigi. Gigi's my my new baby, and that, it was just for her, man. Uh, I was just motivated. I was. I was a man on fire walking to that case. Then just to hear the crowd, that was amazing. That was awesome. Finally, we had fans. And when the fans are there, I performed my best, and I was excited. That was amazing. You were digging to the body pretty early in the fight. Like, he started leaving it wide open for you, and, and you were just going right to the bread basket, kind of banking those points, so to speak. I mean, you were obviously going for the knockout. You didn't want this fight to last very long, but you were very patient waiting for it. Ike. Like, was the patience something in your coaches really took a lot of value in heading into this fight? Yes, sir, yeah. Because, you know, we had a lot riding on this fight. You know, it was a make or break. So I didn't want to rush it. I, I knew eventually I would get it. I was just being patient. I had to wear the body down. And me going to the body, it not it took away his shot. He he would he couldn't change levels because I kept hitting hitting the body. We noticed that in film, and that was the main game plan. Wear the body down. Eventually, his hands will drop, and my overhand right will come up, you know, come into play. And it did because I was very surprised he didn't shoot. And my game plan worked. It was amazing. What'd you call it? The the kiss of death? Is that what oh, you nicknamed it? <laughs> Mario, yeah, Mario Ellie, Game Seven, kiss of death. That's a Houston legacy right there. So, yeah, that was amazing. And just the way it went, when, I, when he fell down, it all played out. Like, it was amazing, man. You can't even write it. I was like, man, perfect end to my, like, a chapter. It's like, man, movie ending, kiss of death. Good night. <laughs> I mean, that was that's as vicious of a knockout as you'll ever see. Like, do you remember, like, vividly what it felt like when it landed? Because I've talked to guys like Michael Chandler, when he knocked out Benson Henderson in his yeah. last Bellator fight, he said he didn't remember the shot landing at all. Like, do you yeah. remember it? Like, and if so, oh. what did it feel like? Oh, oh man, it was like, did body just collapse? It was, like, amazing. Like, I felt my hand go through his jaw. Like, I can feel, like, my my fist going to the back of his head. If you look at the pictures that USC posted, you'll see the ripple effects in the back of his head, like that skull moved. It was a pretty gruesome, but, yeah. Ah, man, I still have that in my memory. I'm like, it was amazing. Like, man, but like I said, years of hard work into that punch. 13 years, and I just let it into him. So it's like, man, I can see the, the confetti flying out. Just like, man, <laughs> it was amazing. Weight lifted off your shoulders, I assume? Just oh, a big yes, weight? Sir. Yes, because I, I showed the world I belong to the UFC. And that's how you prove it. Make a statement. I didn't get the 50000 but, man, just getting that first win was better than the 50000 I was just going to say, because yeah. I, and I said this after the fight as well, you get the win, you've done the right things in the fight. You said the right things on the microphone after the fight. You didn't go on and be like, Hey, Dana, I want that 50 G's. Like you just said, listen, I'm a blue collar guy. I'm trying to take care of this family. I love working for the UFC. It's an honor to work for this company. You did everything right. And then they give out the bonuses fight at night. Easy. Worley Alves gets a bonus. And then Umar and gets a bonus who, by the way, not taking anything away from him, spectacular performance, but no bonus for the hurricane. Were, like, were you surprised you didn't get the bonus? Yeah, I was a little upset, man. I was kind of more, more heartbroken man, about it, man, because you look at uh, Khabib's uh, cousin. He was a 7-1 to one favorite, man. I was like, come on, man. My fight was a little bit even. But, man, it was just – it was a little heartbreaking, but man, I was just glad I got the win. I mean, you can't – it's part of the game, man. It was, I was so close. Me and Jason House, we laughed about it now. We're like, man, we almost had it. And, uh, but just hearing, just hearing the guys like DC and Paul Felder, <clears throat> they all felt my story. They all, you know, they told me eventually I'll, I'll get taken care of later down the road. So we'll see what happens. We'll see if they'll send me a little extra or something. But we'll see. Did you get a chance to talk to Dan at all after? Did he say anything to you? Uh, no, I did talk to the VP of USC. They came and shook my hand. I didn't get to talk to Dana. Mick Maynard. I talked to Mick Maynard. He was proud of me. 
And uh, that was about it. I haven't talked to Danny yet, but but I'll give my shot soon. So the win's bigger than the bonus, but I'm sure just getting home, you, you mentioned Gigi, getting home to your family, your new baby girl, coming home with the victory, that's got to be worth more than any bonus could could ever pay you, right? Yes, sir, man. It was amazing coming back home, seeing my family. Everybody was so happy for me. It was amazing, man. It was just, you know, being able to come back home and, like, just seeing my kids and you know, seeing my wife, it was amazing. And just making my, especially my sons, making them proud. And, you know, all the years of hard work I sacrificed, missing time with them, finally paid off. And they're, and hey, I made a sports center top ten. Yes, that badass. I was the number uh, top three. That was a, forget. I didn't get the bonus, but just being able to have my kids say, "Dad, you were on sports center top 10. That was amazing, man. Their friends loved it. My family loved it. My teammates. It was amazing. That's amazing, man. <laughs> I thought it was great. You, you said in your interview with DC, you were like, listen, this is great. But I'll be back to work on Monday. And it looks like you get your work shirt on. It's Monday yeah. night to record back to work. And I know, I know you and I have talked about this before, but so many people have been asking me over the last few days, for those who don't know, what do you do for work outside of fighting? I work for hunting subsea, um, uh, CNC machinists. And, uh, just something, uh, so I'm, I follow my dad's footsteps, uh, so I'm great, man. I'm one of uh, the highest level of being machines you can get. And I've been doing it for so long, I refuse to give it up because I follow my dad's footsteps. It's my, it was my dad. I just, you know, uh, my dad boxed growing up. That's how I follow. I'll continue to follow my dad's footsteps and what he got. I feel it's like I'm just following his legacy. I would never give it up and I'll continue to fight. And, Working and fighting kind of makes me a hungrier fighter. And that's why I'll never give it up, man. I'm very thankful to have the hunting family support me. That's the reason I came back to fight. And they gave me the opportunity to come back. So I would never let them down. I'm very thankful to work for them and be able to provide for my family. They've always been, because you and I have been talking since before you got signed to the UFC. And we've talked about like how supportive this company has been towards you. They put on pep rallies before your fights and they throw parties for you like, what was it like going back to work today? Did they uh, big party for you? Big luncheon? Uh, yeah, I had Shipley Donuts waiting for me at my desk. Today. It was amazing. <laughs> it was awesome, and they were all excited. You're like, man, you're like, you know, to see a knockout like that on national TV, it's amazing. Usually, it's at the small local shows, but seeing a knockout like that was amazing. They're all excited for me, and I'm still getting the phone calls from the big bosses too. Nice. So, uh, so what's next for you, man? I mean, you're back at work now, home with the family, going to smell the rose a little bit. When do you, perfect world, when do you want to get back in there? Like any, any matchups in particular that, that you're looking at that makes sense to you? Oh uh, man, I'll leave that to Jason house, you know, uh, uh, hire Jason for a reason. He's the best in the game. So we're looking at May or June, you know, uh, that's what I really want. I want to focus on getting a little bit better. So I need to get, stay in the gym and stay ready and still develop. I still got a lot, of, a lot of holes in my game I need to fix. So I need to start showing my kicks. I need to start showing my wrestling in the next fight. So we'll see what plays out. But like I said, May or June, I'd like to get back in there. Last thing before we let you go, for uh, I, I know you've talked a little bit on social media about people who have sort of jumped off the bandwagon, doubting you, talking trash, you know, people ready to cast you off Ike after the first couple of fights. Like you, the, 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 you go up a weight class and you fight Chase Sherman, the Jordan Wright fight ended unfortunate in an unfortunate way. It was kind of out of your control. What do you want to say to those folks now that you have this first win under your belt? You're on sports center. You have this great moment. Like, what do you want to say to those people now? And like I said, uh, you see them in the interview. They said, I'll never make it. Look at me now. Look what I did. Now I tell them tweet about that. Tweet about my blue collar mentality. I'm a, uh, I just had the greatest knockout Wednesday night, and the blue collar mentality. Of me, I come back and I show up to work and work my shift. There's no, there's no cheating in the game. I had no shortcuts to the UFC. I hard work, and that's all I know is hard work. So you know, all, all those doubters, you know, tweet about me now. What can you say? The negativity, all that you, they said. Before, before I, no, I read all the tweets tweet about that and uh bloody elbow they talked bad about me and the other day they uh, they didn't they didn't want to spend no time talking about my fight so it's like i got the knockout they sure there they go tagging away i with the vicious knockout man save it save it you're gonna down talk me like i said i don't need no new new fans i i, I love the loyal fans who stuck by me 
they, when I was down, they stayed by me, man. So I'm thankful to have y'all and everybody in my corner, man. Was, hey, tweet about my story now, man. I'm excited, man. It's just another chapter. But like I said, it's that blue collar mentality I keep. You're like the Jerry Seinfeld of MMA. You don't need any any more friends, any more fans. You're good. You're good with <laughs> it. Yeah, man. The new ones that want to come on, come on. But like I said, man, stay by, stay by me, man. There you go. Listen, man, I, I'm, I'm super happy for you. Like I said, and people know by now, you and I, we've been doing this for a little while now since the Fury FC days. Now we're in the UFC getting wins. Very happy for you. Well, great story. And you made it back to work. You're a man of your word as always. So I appreciate the time. Congratulations on the win. And uh, looking forward to seeing you hopefully in May or June, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. Appreciate your time. Thank you, bud.